United States troops close in on the cold, barren island of Amchitka in the Aleutians, a new base for the bombing of the Jap-held island of Kiska, 40 airline miles away. The Japs had completed reconnaissance of Amchitka, but this American convoy got there first. They seized the initiative in the struggle for this important chain of islands that stretches 600 miles west of Alaska like a curved sword pointed at the Japanese mainland. These official army pictures made during the winter have just been released. Brigadier General Jones commands the operation. The shoreline hums with activity as army engineers prepare runways for fighter and bombing planes. The Japs on Kiska Island are being heavily pounded almost every day. These Americans are ready for the fight to drive the Japanese out of the Aleutian Islands. The Dion Quintuplets, Canada's most celebrated citizens, take the train for an important visit to the United States. They will launch five war cargo freighters built in America for British use. The quintuplets are now nine years old. Annette, Cecile, Yvonne, Emily, Marie. The ships are 6,000 ton coastal vessels and little Annette has been chosen by lot to sponsor the first one. Five ships and the five launchings are as much alike as the five Dion girls themselves. And now the little girls pay a tribute to their mother, 33-year-old Mrs. Dion. Red roses and a special five-way salute. General Montgomery and his soldiers of the British 8th Army plan their part in the final battle of North Africa. New Zealanders, Highlanders, men of England. These battle-hard troops have chased the Germans across the breadth of Africa and squeezed them into an impossible position in Tunisia. Through town after Tunisian town, the 8th Army triumphantly marches pushing the retreating Axis troops northward as the British, French, and Americans pound them from the west. For Field Marshal Rommel's Africa Corps, for Adolf Hitler's plan of world conquest, for Mussolini's dream of empire, for the smug security of fortified Axis Europe, this is the beginning of the end. As the 8th Army drives northward through Gabez, nearing a junction with its American allies, General Eisenhower, Allied Commander-in-Chief, pays a visit to General Montgomery. Already a glorious tradition, the 8th Army triumphantly occupies Gabez. Highland Pipers leading the way. Supplies arrive by sea on the heels of the British successes. As each coastal city falls, it becomes a supply depot for the victorious British. Allied control of Mediterranean waters has made it possible to keep food and ammunition rolling right with the troops. The fleeing Nazis are given no chance to dig in. Montgomery pushes on without pause, his armor mauling the German rear guards. and French troops drive spearheads into the wounded Nazis' flank. Here the Americans got their baptism of battle. 
the hot flame that forged them into the fighting unit which was to overrun the German elite troops at Bizerre. Past hastily made German and Italian graves, the Americans moved to meet their British brothers in arms. American tank men and an advance patrol of British infantrymen make a dash for each other. Allies in name, allies in action. These men, with their French comrades, are united, dedicated to the task of driving the Axis from North Africa, and after that, to the coming Battle of Europe. American and British air power sweeps the vaunted Luftwaffe from the Mediterranean skies in the opening phase of the last chapter in the Battle of Africa. Bombers and fighters pounding and strafing the Axis columns, frantically preparing a ring of defenses around the vital objectives of Tunis and Bizerte. darkness falls, the Allied big guns go into action to prepare the way for complete collapse of the Axis defenses. Nazi rear guards and Nazi wounded are caught up in the surging onrush of the Allied armies. The wounded are treated and cared for by Allied medical officers as the advance continues. The end. Tunis and Bizerte have fallen. And with these two bastions of Axis resistance, prisoners counted in the tens of thousands fall to the victors. High officers, including Colonel General von Arnhem and 11 other generals. Thousands upon thousands of Italian and German troops lay down their arms and surrender. The Battle of North Africa, which has cost the Axis some 400,000 men in dead, wounded and prisoners, is over. This is General Dwight Eisenhower, Allied commander in Tunisia. The victory is won, and now the victorious Allied leaders look eagerly across the Mediterranean to the shores of Hitler's fortress Europe.